Hi all, hope everybody's staying safe and healthy during these crazy times. Decided to start these art lessons. So if you're tuning in, welcome to my first one. I'm gonna go through a rundown of our supplies that we're gonna need quick to get started. I have a four by four canvas that we're gonna need. Mine has extended edges, but yours can have whatever you want. And then we have four different kinds of paints that we're gonna need today. We have titanium white, phthalo green, ultramarine blue, and a medium hue yellow. In addition to those paints, we need one last thing, and that is our paint brushes. I'm gonna be working with three today. We have a medium round tip that we'll be using for our background. A small round tip edge that we use to get some of our flowers done today. And then a fine point to get our details on there. If you have those all set, once you find yourself in a good working space, get yourself some music, get in a good vibe, and then follow along with me. All right, all we're gonna be painting some nice flowers today. We wanna give ourselves a blue background so it's that, that it's not too intense. We're gonna make sure that we have some white on our palette to start, as well as our ultramarine blue. So once you have both of those together on your palette, you're gonna to wanna to start with your medium-sized round tip. And since we're using acrylic, you wanna make sure that your brush is a tiny bit wet, but not too much. So have a nice piece of paper towel or a rag set off to the side that you could just dab it on after you dip it in the water. And we're gonna be taking about two scoops of our white right there and adding one scoop of blue. And we have that mixed together. Add a tiny bit more blue if you want that to be one shade darker like that. We have a nice baby blue mixed together. And with that, you're gonna grab that baby blue and you're gonna start at the top of your canvas and use large paint strokes to go from one side to the other. And you're gonna start moving your way down the canvas. Shouldn't take too long because it is a four by four, but if you're working with large edges, like the kind that I have here, you do wanna make sure that you get those as well. And we're not gonna use that blue all the way down, but for now, go about halfway. And then we are going to begin to fade. So the best way to do that is once you have your blue, probably about halfway, quarter, three fourths of the way down your canvas, you're gonna wanna go in and start adding a little bit more white as you go down. to get that blue to become even lighter. So towards the bottom, we will just have a nice white tinted canvas. If you feel like you need more paint, just add that straight to your palette. Better to start out with not enough and add as you go than be wasteful. I'm adding my white all the way down to the bottom. And you can see that it, it does have a little bit of a blue tint, but you it does give us a nice fade, making sure that we have white all the way down at the bottom there. You want to make sure that it's nice and even all across your canvas, and then the color has the fade that you want. And then again, don't forget to paint the sides as well and do the same thing so that it's uniform. So you wanna add the white and have a nice fade there as well. The nice thing about these canvases is that you kind of get a little extra painting room, kind of two extra mini canvases on the side there 
that we'll be able to add some flowers to as well if we if we wanted to. And with that, you just want to make sure that your ends are all even and that the white remains uniform all the way down to the bottom. Because we're having all the way faded to white, the underneath can just be plain white, but you'll want to make sure that you paint it just so that it looks even and you don't have a blank canvas. Never want to have any visible blank canvas if you can avoid it. Right. Two more sides. And the best is to put a tarp underneath as you're leaning or use an area like the studio, like my studio space or a workstation that you have that might be better to get paint places. Just like, so that you don't have to worry about making a mess. I'm mixing some more paint together, making sure that I have enough to finish those sides. Again, like I said before, acrylic paint dries very quickly, so it's better to use minuscule amounts than to be wasteful. Sorry for the awkward view at the moment. Just making sure that I get all of the areas of the canvas that are visible covered in paint. All right, one more side to go. And if your canvas doesn't have as big of sides as mine does, just make sure that you are still adding paint to it for in all the visible locations. But of course you don't need to go as extreme with it as I am. And again, I'm doing that nice fade, trying not to smudge any of the undried paint. Well, I'm making sure that the fade is consistent and that the painting is uniform all the way around. And now that I'm about halfway, I'm gonna add some white and begin that last fade on our last side here. Once you make sure that all of those sides are even, you have that nice uniform fade. Just make sure the front is all touched up from the excess paint marks and that you still have that nice blue sky look. Okay, we're gonna let that dry just for a couple seconds here. Acryl acrylic paint does dry relatively quickly, so luckily we don't have to wait too long like we would if we were working with an oil paint or something that takes days to dry or hours to dry. Acrylic paint dries very quickly, which, it's, which is why it's nice to have small amounts on your palette just so, so you don't waste too much money on your supplies. So while we're waiting for this to dry, we already have blue and white on our palette, but feel that free to add a little bit more white if you don't have enough, because we are gonna be using that during our next stage as well. And then make sure to add some green in there also. We're using phthalo green. 
very medium toned green. And you can find all these supplies at your local arts and crafts store, Michaels, Blick, AC Moore, um, whatever is nearest you. They should have acrylic paint and starter set paint brushes as well as blank canvases. And this painting that we're doing can be done on any size. I'm doing it on a small one, but if you want to use a large scale canvas or something even smaller, perhaps feel free. All the steps would be the same. Just make sure to scale it down to the correct way to fit onto your canvas there. Right, so we're gonna be picking up our second size brush, our medium size round tip. And again, as we dip it in the water, just make sure to dab it off on your paper towel or um, piece of cloth. And we want to go with our phthalo green. We're going to start with just straight phthalo green. And this next step is really based upon what you feel and how many flowers you want, but we're gonna be doing the stems for the flowers. So you wanna alternate some sizes, give them some different shapes. We're just gonna start with the stems and then we'll go back in and add the leaves. So feel free to go as high or as short as you want. We're just gonna do one long line all the way down to the bottom. Doesn't need to be straight, doesn't, need to be a certain height really again it's just based on how you feel and how many flowers and how big you want these flowers to be you do want the base of the flowers to be a little bit thicker than the rest just to make sure that they're steady and they don't blow away in the wind or anything and we're going to go back in and touch those up to make sure that they're perfect with our smaller paintbrush but we want to make sure that we get all the stems out and get our painting base down. So I'm going to go ahead to the second stem, same thing, one line all the way down. Don't worry about it not being straight. Don't worry about it being imperfect. You're just going to continue with that, making sure that all the bottoms of the stems are just a little bit thicker than the top there. And again, we can go back and touch up, making sure that they're perfect, giving them all their fine details with our little paintbrush. But you just wanna make sure that the green is visible and there's no see-through from that underneath, blue or white. So you can go back and just touch those up if you need to, or if you came in too quickly and the paint from underneath was still a little wet. So you're gonna do that all the way across your canvas, having the flowers and the stems be in a bunch of different sizes, totally up to you and how you're feeling. I'll give you a little to just relax to the music and go with the vibe that you're feeling for the painting and get those flower stems on there.
And you do want to keep in mind that you have to add flowers to the top of these, so just make sure to leave room in between them to add those flowers and the stems. Now's your chance if you feel like any of the stems are uneven. You need to fix them up to even out with the ones that you drew later on. That's totally fine. Just go back in and fix them, make them look a little bit more uniform. Or leave them all to be totally different like they are in nature. Totally up to you. Just going back in myself and making my first two stems a little bit thicker just because I felt they needed a little bit extra to even out with their other flower friends on our canvas here. And not perfect, but again, we can go back in with some details if we need. For now, we're gonna go and rinse off that green brush. Make sure we get any of that excess paint off that we don't need. Dab it off to the side, and we wanna add some stems. So, we're gonna go back in with that green. And our stems, we wanna start closest to the last stem that we just did, sorry, our leaves. To add in our leaves, we wanna start closest to our stem here. And we're going to start pressing down a little bit harder on our paintbrush and flaring out, lifting up our hand as we go so the paint stroke gets lighter and lighter towards the end. Give ourselves a nice stem there. You can do that two or three times just to make sure the stem is nice and thick, the shape that you want it. And if you feel like you need to practice off to the side first by going thick, pressing down on the paintbrush and then slowly lifting your hand up as you bring it out so that the stroke gets thinner. If you need to practice off to the side, that's totally fine. Grab a side piece of paper and just get some practice strokes on there before you go to your canvas. And then as you feel more comfortable, just go from flower to flower, pressing down, get lifting your hand up as you get to the end of this of the leaf. Again, two or three times is good. You're just gonna continue with that on all of the flowers, adding one or two stems to each, one or two leaves, sorry one or two leaves to each stem. And they don't need to be perfect. Each can be different sizes.
definitely make them as small or as narrow as you feel, depending on each stem. Leaf shape is totally up to you. Once you feel like you're comfortable with all your leaves, you've gone back in and touched some of them up. And you feel like you've really nailed that small, that large to small stroke aspect. You can go ahead and put that medium sized brush back in the water and we're gonna take out our smallest brush here. Her detail brush and we are going to add a little bit of yellow to our palette and we're gonna brighten up our green to add some highlights and some detail to those stems and leaves we're just gonna need a little bit of paint mixed for this we're just gonna take one scoop of yellow and a scoop of green and we're going to mix those together to give ourselves a little bit of a lime green there green that's just a tiny bit brighter than the green that we had on our palette originally that's just going to add something a little bit different and we're going to go in and add that to the edges of our stems giving it just a little bit more color. And if you feel like it's just not bright enough or you want some a little bit more contrast, you can go in and add a little white into the palette. It's just a small, small bit, don't need a whole lot. And you can just brighten up that green just a little. Give yourself kind of a third tone to play around with. And you're just gonna wanna add that to some of the areas of the stem and the leaves give it a little bit of dimension and you can go in and feel free to put those wherever you want just try and keep in mind that light will always come from the same location so like i'm doing here we're gonna have light be coming from the top so we are going to have our highlights on the tops of the leaves and eventually on the tops of our flowers there. We're just going to be doing this quickly on the leaves, giving them a little bit more attention, helping your eye be drawn to them a little bit more in the painting darkening up some of the sections of our stem as well since they are in shadow from the flowers and as well as underneath the leaves the bottom and you can feel free to add all of the dark areas and then go back and add all the light areas after or work stem to stem it's totally up to you Right now I'm going to be working with my dark color first, blocking those all in, darkening up my stem a little bit, giving a little bit more detail, and then I'm going to go back in 
with the lighter green, giving it highlights. And eventually I will add some white to that as well, making sure that the ends of the leaves do really feel like they're getting hit by the sun there. you feel like the darker areas of the leaves and the stem have been filled in and you're working like I am, you can go on, rinse off your brush and add some of that lighter color, giving the leaves it that little highlight that they need. Keeping in mind the light source. Once you feel like all of the stems are up to par and really where you want them, we are going to work, start working into our flowers and then we'll go in if we want to add some white highlights around the whole piece as well as some black to really show the shadow areas, we can do that as well. So we want to make sure for this next step that we have enough white on our palette because we're going to be needing white for the center of our flowers as well as the stem. So if you need more white, now's the time to go ahead and dab that on. As well as yellow, make sure that you have enough yellow as well. So we are gonna take one scoop of that yellow, find a place on our palette. I know mine is quite dirty, apologize for that and then take another scoop of white. We're gonna mix that all together to get a nice summer sunshine yellow for the center of our flowers. And I apologize for not mentioning earlier, but we are going to be using a medium sized circle tip. We went and we put our fine tip paintbrush back in the water. And once you feel like you have a good significant amount of paint on that paintbrush, so if you feel like you have too much, just twist it around in the palette and we'll get rid of some of that excess. Go ahead and take your brush. And we're gonna be doing some circle centers here. Some of them are gonna be different shapes due to the direction that the flower is going. So I'll show you how to do two different kinds of centers. We're going to start with just our typical circle. It can be circle, oval, doesn't need to be perfect, can even have little bumps in it. Because again, flower middles are not perfect. No flowers out there are perfect, right? We just want to make sure that we have a good knowledge of what the center of the flower is in comparison to the petals. Over this first one, we have a nice circle that's about a quarter of an inch above the stem there, kind of floating a little bit above it, like you would put a dot on an eye. And we're gonna leave that there just like that and then move on to our next flower. I think the same thing as if you're dotting an eye, we're gonna leave that little bit of space, except this is gonna be kind of like a capped circle. So we're gonna start and draw half a circle and stop. And once we stopped, once we have our half circle, we are gonna connect it with a small curve at the bottom, just as if you just curved the bottom, as if you just curved a straight line. 
and put a little cap on that eye. You want the bottom of that one just to be a little bit more visibly flat. I'm going to do the same thing for the next one. So if you want, I'll show you the second way to do it. We can go ahead and put a straight line at the bottom there, just a tiny bit above the stem. Again, like we're dotting an eye. I'm going to start with that line there kind of straight but just a tiny bit of a curve to it and then we're just gonna do a circle connecting it like a little arch or a little hat and on my canvas that goes all the way to the top that one is gonna be my tallest flower but again if you're working on another canvas that's totally fine making these ones have little caps due to the fact that they are the tallest the leaves are gonna be pulling down a little bit more so keep that in mind when you're doing yours as well if you want. We have this next one. We are also going to do our last little cap here. We're going to do that bottom line. And our half a circle. And for the next two, you really can mix it up however you want. So I personally am going to do a little circle for the next one as if I put a little dot on my eye there. And again, doesn't need to be perfect, can be a little misshaping, can be oval. Don't worry about perfection here. And then the next one, I'm going to do another little cap for this one. Now that we have all of our centers of our flowers there, we can start moving on to our petals, which is our last stage before we go in and add all our details. So for our petals, we're gonna do white. We're gonna have some white flowers today with little yellow centers. And our petals, we're gonna take a similar um, action like we did with our leaves. So you wanna get a good amount of paint on there on your paintbrush. We're going to start with our bottom one down here and we're going to start closest to the center, closest to the circles that we just created. And you're going to be pressing down hard on your paintbrush and flaring out to get smaller. And you can do that two or three times again, depending on how thick you want the petals to be. making sure that the ends do get smaller as you go out, giving our petals a little shape. You're gonna do that all the way around. Let's start with this first flower. And keep in mind the direction that some of the petals are going. They're towards the bottom. Might wanna have them be a little bit longer since they're falling towards the ground in that direction. I'm going to work all the way around each flower, starting close and again just flaring out as each one takes its shape and begins getting its petals there. And then some can be shorter than others, some can be a little rounded, giving your flowers a little bit of dimension there. And don't worry about the center getting too small. We are gonna go back in and make sure that everything is touched up with our details and adding little white highlights and low lights in here as well. 
Don't worry about anything overlapping or little miss smudges because those are, can all be fixed. Now for our little cat flowers, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're not gonna be going all the way around. Like we have our two circle flowers, but these are just gonna have petals at the bottom as if they're falling towards the end. And again, same thing, you wanna start big and get a little bit smaller towards the bottom. You can add as many petals as you want, make them as big as you want. Making sure that they all have a similar shape, definitely don't all have to be the same, but all similar so that it stays pretty cohesive. Once you get the hang of that, you can go on to the next one. You're gonna do the same thing if you kept to exactly what I'm doing. We're going on to another cat flower. You can do the same exact thing, adding flowers falling down to the bottom. Shaped however you feel. Go in and retouch things if you need. One nice thing about acrylic paint is that nothing is Truly permanent, you can paint over things if you need. Not as easily fixable as oil. The acrylic does give you that little bit of malleability to fix mistakes. I'm just gonna continue with those petals all the way on all your flowers, giving your flowers their own unique look. And have them flow with whatever you think is best, making them as big, as long as you want. We're giving them just a couple petals or a lot of petals, totally up to you. Right, and on to the last flower again. Another cap one, so we're just gonna have some petals falling towards the bottom.
right, once you have all your flowers and your stems on there, you are so close to being done. We're just gonna go in with our little detail brush. And we're gonna add some white highlights places and some black as well. So we didn't have black in our original palette, but sometimes, you know, you don't always know what you're gonna need or your idea might change based on what you're seeing or how you're feeling as you're creating. So we're gonna add some little black details. So if you do wanna add just some black to your palette, just a small dab is fine. You don't need a whole lot. And we are now gonna use our small brush and focus on white and black highlights. So we're gonna go in with white again and kind of add some white highlights into the areas that don't have some. So like our leaves, small, small details on our leaves that we feel like might have a little highlight area on it. So the ends of the leaves, little white lines can be added. Maybe a line towards the bottom of the stem. This helps just give the painting a little bit more life, add a little bit more dimension, give it a little bit of detail. Doesn't need a whole lot, you see I'm just adding small amounts of lines places, could even just be little dots in areas if you want. And now is also a time, if you may have noticed, I did get little marks on my canvas from leaning on it. Totally normal. Sometimes you can even put a cloth underneath your hand to avoid it. You can just go back in and fix those, adding, making them into little details like I am with this white. Just using it to my advantage, making that a little highlight. Or by totally covering it up in sections by going in with that same color. And going just right over the area that had been affected, fixing the problem right up as if it wasn't even there. Details. I've added my white accents to my stems. I am going to add a little bit of white to the center of my flowers as well, just a little bit on the top. I'm just going to add little dots to it, not lines, to make it a little less harsh, but still allowing some dimension in there. Dots are a nice way to add highlights or lowlights without having it be too intense or too overwhelming on the eye. I'm just going in and gently dabbing my brush on the canvas towards the top of each center of the flower just to show a little bit of sunlight that's coming from above. And that one I added a tiny bit too much. I'm just going back in with some yellow, which is nice, giving it some more dimension, adding some little bit of shadow. I'm gonna go in and add some regular medium yellow, nor yellow that hasn't been mixed with the white, and add that towards this bottom of the petals and the center of the flower. 
allowing this to give a little bit of shadow, a little bit of depth. And show the difference of that yellow, that pale yellow up against our white petals. Once we've added that, we want to rinse off our brush. Make sure it's nice and clean. Because now we are going to go in for our final step. Our black highlight, our black low lights, excuse me. We want to go back in with our small brush, making sure that it's nice and clean from all the white and yellow that we've just used. Putting a little bit of black on our palette, wiping it off on the side if we need to. And I'm going to start again with the stems. So right under at the top of the stems, there are going to be a little shadows because of the flower and it being hidden by the top of the flower. So we're going to start at the top of each stem and add small, gentle lines, not pressing too hard on our paintbrush. I'm kind of working our way down the stem, adding these small, small brush strokes as we go and then adding them to the bottom of the leaf, making sure that we don't add too much since our leaf is going to be mostly in the sun and mostly with those white highlights. So again, we're gonna go into our next one and we have this leaf that's a tiny bit more covered by the flower so that is going to be a little bit darker as compared to the one below it. So we are going to add some black lines in there as well as again right on the top of the stem making sure that it is noticeable that this is in shadow. Now we're going to work our way down the stem just like we did with the last flower, giving it as much shadow as you feel based on how big the flower is, and then less and less lines as we go down. Again, making sure that we keep our paint strokes nice and light and not pressing too hard on the canvas. Again, if you want to practice your strokes on a side paper or on your palette, that's totally fine. And work your way up to the canvas, work your way up to the flowers and the stems, making sure that those small, delicate paint strokes are really what you're getting. And you just want to make sure that every time you feel like that area of the stem is going to be put in shadow by our imaginary sun, that we add a little bit of black lines to that just to give it a little bit more depth. Just working our way from flower to flower, adding these little black details in there, making sure that each flower looks more and more realistic as we go. Really giving ourselves that springtime outside feel as we're all in here being safe and staying healthy.
as you're getting to the last flower, just take a look at all the other ones, make sure that they're cohesive and you've kept that same balance throughout the shadows on all of the stems. Once you've finished with that black on all of the stems, you should be able to see a little bit more dimension thanks to the black and white that we've added. And we're gonna go in and add our final details to our actual flowers. Again, we're gonna start with the center and just making a sure only a little bit of black is on your paintbrush, don't want it too intense. And in the center, we are gonna go back to doing little dots for our black and we're putting that towards the bottom of each center flower so towards our bottom petals maybe a little bit in certain areas at the edge depending on if it is a circle or a little cap for the flower center well, the cat flower that would stick just towards the end and dot just around where the bottom of the circle is, just on the top of each of the petals. And for all the circles, you could add little dots all around, showing that all the petals are being touched by that center, flower, center of the flower. So we're gonna go in and make sure that there's not that much paint on our paintbrush and just add our little stippling, our little dotting to all of the center of our flowers. Give you all some time to do that. We have a little stippling on all of them. If you feel like you added a little bit too much in certain places, that's totally fine. Again, like I was saying earlier, just take that color that you need to go back over. So in this case, I'll add a little bit more yellow to my top flower up there so that it's not too intense with the black. And I'm just gonna go back in right on top of it. And it tones it down just a little bit. Black is harder to cover up, but with something like this, it will just make it a little bit of another shade. So it's not too big of a deal. So you can go in and add that to some of the flower centers if you feel like it needs it. Or if you feel like it just gives it a nice dimension. And lastly, we're just gonna add a little bit of those black low lights to our petals, give our petals a little bit I mentioned, show the different petals in each flower. And we're not gonna go around each one, we're just gonna start in the center and do our soft touch um, strokes around all the petals around the bottom of the petals, I should say. You don't wanna go all the way around unless you wanna have a real cartoon feel, which is totally fine. You can go around all the petals, making sure they have a nice outline around them all. Or if you wanna keep it kind of simple, you can go around just certain areas, kind of differentiating them from the other parts of the painting.
so you can see that I'm adding black lines just to the little areas of the petals that I feel need to be highlighted or need to stand out a tiny bit more. I add this little black line to help show the difference or help have them get a little bit more attention from the eye. It's always nice to do when you work with white, especially with flowers, just because the petals do kind of blend together at times. And each flower is going to be a little bit different. Again, you can make it as different as you want. And just keep in mind that this is your artwork. This is your creation. And you can take this in any direction that you want. If you want to go totally off path, add a different color in there. It is completely up to you. I'm just going to continue adding these black lines to my flowers, making sure that they really stand out, especially up against one another and up against the stems of the other flowers. I'm just going to continue that, outlining the flowers that I feel need to be outlined or adding little lines where I feel little black lines needed to be added. I'll give you all the time to do that and get your flowers all pretty and presentable. Each of the flowers that you've created are all totally unique, so keep that in mind as you're finishing them up, giving them their final lines.
And the black may be a little intense for some of you, so if you're realizing that you don't want to add as much black, that's totally okay. I do feel that personally it adds a little bit more of a dynamic aspect to the painting. But black is a bit of a harsh color when it comes to artwork. So it is not everybody's cup of tea or everybody's go-to, especially when we're talking about flowers. You can already see the difference between the areas that I've added black and that last flower that we have in both still very pretty, very unique, but each gives a little bit of a different feel to the painting. We're gonna go in with this last flower, just giving it some of those black lines that we've given all the other ones, making it cohesive with the rest. As we're coming to the end, you can take a look back at your canvas, touch up any of the areas that you feel might just need a little bit of fixing, and really take a look at what you've accomplished today. What having to stay inside allowed you to do, maybe something that you've never done before, maybe something that you haven't gotten the opportunity or the time to do, even though you did love it in the past. I hope that you all found this relaxing and that you found this enjoyable and that it helped you have a little bit of relief from the stress that is going on in the world today. Although we have to be stuck inside, it is for your health, our health, and it will hopefully bring positivity down the road. So once you're done with adding those little details and making sure that everything is touched up just the way you like it, the last step of any piece of artwork, of course, is to sign it. So you can feel free to sign it with your acrylic paint in any color that you want. Typically, artists do sign in black. So that's what I will be signing in today. And since I have such big sides on my canvas, I'm going to be util utilizing that and signing on the side. I'm also going to be signing with a Sharpie as opposed to paint, just because I do find it easier. And if you want, you could add the date. I always like to add the year on mine, just so I know when I created it. And you can take a look, perhaps hang it on your wall, give it as a gift, use it as a reminder that spring is in the near future and that you have accomplished something awesome today and you finished a full painting. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a stress relief time during your day. Thank you so much.